Hello everyone, welcome to Gypsy Jazz Fridays episode 10. And today we're going to take a look at some beautiful phrases that Stocholo Rosenberg plays on Bossa Dorado. Stokolo's playing is very special to me for several reasons. First of all, I've played with Stokolo many, many times. Uh, I toured with the Rosberg Trio for seven years as a violin player. And uh, I knew Stokolo from before I played guitar. And then we started this online site called the Rosenberg Academy. And I started transcribing dozens and dozens of Stokolo Rosenberg solos. And that's how I eventually started to learn to play the guitar. That's a long story, which I've told in other videos. But obviously, it's my start in Gypsy Jazz guitar. And for a long while, I, was, I sounded exactly like a bad version of Stockler Rosberg, in the sense that I was only playing his phrases, but obviously not with the same level of technique by far, or the same timing or sensitivity. And as I got better and better in it, I also started exploring more options besides Stockholo Rosenberg's language. And now, of course, my playing is a mix between lots of different things. But I can't hide my uh, source, my source um, inspiration, which is Stockholo Rosenberg. So it's only fitting to take a look at some of uh, his beautiful licks in this video, but also in uh, future videos. Of course, if you want to learn more of these kinds of phrases, there's always the Rosenberg Academy, which is rosenbergacademy.com, which has over 100 solos of Stockholm. He carefully transcribed each note with a theoretical explanations of the licks and back and tracks and stuff. It's great. I'll put a link to the Rosenberg Academy in the description. Let's get started. Um, I chose five phrases. I have, I have more, I have like 10, but I will do five uh, in this video and I will do five in a video, especially for my patrons. Um, just the normal level patrons or the, the $10 level patrons, you can um, check that video out on Patreon. There's a link to that site also in the description. The first phrase is a phrase uh, from E7 to E half diminished A7. So uh, if you have Bosso Dorado, you get D minor. And then it's E7. And it starts in the second bar E7. And then you get two, five, one. Okay? The phrase sounds like this. Three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. So this is a good phrase to practice your diminished arpeggios. And Stochel likes to start these diminished arpeggios from uh, several chord tones, the root, for example, uh, and the third, mostly. And then he likes to approach that uh, third with two chromatic notes. And if you do that, you kind of hide the fact that you're just playing a diminished arpeggio by putting some embellishments before the arpeggio. And then on E half diminished, just plays a D minor thing to the sharp nine of A7. That's typical Stochler thing too. Do that kind of thing on, the, on D minor. So let me play that on the backing track. There's a backing track on my uh, channel. Though it's pretty slow, it's an old backing track and it's very slow. But that might be good, but for me <laughs> it's a little bit too slow now. Um, but, you know, to practice it's maybe uh, even better. So I can play this obviously in the A parts. Uh, I could actually also play it in the B part, but um, I'll, I'll do something else. So I'll play it the first A, second A and the third A. Mm-hmm. 
the third time I was um, varying the phrase, right? If you start at a different place at the bar, you can play with the rhythms and um, that is a thing you can experiment with. First, of course, try to learn the, the phrase exactly like this and then start experimenting like you should always do with every phrase that I teach you. Next phrase is a, um, a, a signature Stockholo Rosenberg lick. And uh, maybe you've heard it. Let me first play, not what's here, but like I would normally play the lick. Normally I would play it like this. One, two, three, four. So it starts with two repeated notes. And ends on the root of G minor, right? So it goes from D7 to G minor. But here Stockholm plays uh, a rhythmical variation. Uh, very convenient because I was just talking about it. And the first time I heard it, I didn't understand what was happening, but he doesn't do the double notes. Normally I would do, but he plays one A, which turns the lick around. It doesn't really matter if you understand that uh, exactly, but it just changes the sound of the lick to something uh, more more subtle, more uh, unexpected. So I had to describe it and now you can learn it too. Sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Obviously for the bridge, D7 to G minor. Let's play that. Okay, this is a, also a classic Stockholm lick and it's pretty hard. It's a good technique exercise. In fact, I've presented this phrase before as a technique exercise. It's a little bit of a different ending. It's two systems. Uh, let me play the whole lick first. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So I practice this phrase a lot as a technique exercise and it's very good for that. But it's also a beautiful phrase to play exactly on Bosso Dorado. I haven't found many other uses for it, but uh, if you play Bosso Dorado or any Bossa where you have this Two f long 2-5 with the 2 also being a dominant chord, like here E7 to A7, instead of E half diminished to A7, then you can play this. But it has to be in D minor, and I don't know many other songs that have that. Maybe maybe Shaker Sodadje has that, but I'm not completely sure about that even. But uh, for Bostorado is great, so let's play it. Now this is the second system. And by the way, so Stockolo plays these arpeggios. All these diminished arpeggios. And he continues that motive. I, you probably recognize it um, if you hear him play it. Um, is there something else to say about it? No, it's this typical gypsy jazz stuff with the, the open strings, uh, diminished arpeggios for E7. And then the same thing for A7. Just have to be very careful about the picking and about synchronizing your hands and play. practice with a click on two and four, one and three, only be two, and try to 
get it in your fingers. And uh, most most of the time I can actually play it uh, correctly, but even I make can make mistakes in this phrase, even though I practiced it for 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 a long time. So let's see if I can put it off now. A lot of fun if you can pull it off and, and everybody will recognize it as something that Stockholm plays and it will be appreciated, I can tell you. Um, oh, this is just a, a beautiful kind of a guitar trick for E7. It sounds like this. Three, four, one. Three, four, mm. So the, the ending is not important, it just resolves to E flat half diminished. It's about this. It's just this diminished guitar trick, but then just play the, the bottom and the top note. You can go to A7 even by... But you can continue that idea on D7. Just think about all the diminished... Um, triads that fit over dominant chord. So D7 would be this. Right, so you can... And E7 would be... And A7 would be... Let's, let's just uh, play it a bunch of times on, on different dominant chords. Don't use it like that, but to practice. And then this is the last phrase. Another typical Stochelo device. Um, start. It's, it has two components. First, it's this thing. Three, four. Now I'm just repeating. Uh, the first two bars. This beginning uh, phrase, it's, it's really, it really sounds very impressive, it sounds very um, virtuosic, and it's a great way to suggest fast phrases, even though it's not that hard to play. You can either play with a B or with a B flat. I think Stoffel probably plays a B, even though it says a B flat here. Probably plays. Yeah, that's better. I will change that for the Patreon, because if you join Patreon, you can download all these steps.
Then we get to the fast phrase in the last two bars, which Stockholm plays differently from what the tap says. So uh, Stockholm plays it like this. Three, four. Three, four. And um, it sounds great, but it's difficult to pull off in a fast tempo, especially the tempo that Stockholm plays it in, which is much faster than this backing track. So because you get this double downstroke in the middle of the phrase, here. And it's doable, uh, obviously it's doable because Stockholm uh, does it like it's nothing. But I often make mistakes when I have to do the double downstroke that low uh, on, on, um, on those low strings. I'm not sure why, it's like a 50-50 thing. So I actually changed it to a more chromatic thing that I usually play that's, that is like this. Which is pretty much the same effect, but it's so much easier because you can just alternate. So it's your choice, but uh, for safety reasons, I usually play my uh, version. And that comes from a longer phrase that goes like this. Which I talked about in other videos. But that kind of device I always use instead of uh, what Stockholm plays. So I decided to write down my version, just because it's much easier. So the whole thing will sound like this, three, four. Three, four. So let's play that with the backing track. Now this phrase starts actually before the A part. So if I have to, if I want to play it in the beginning, I have to start in the second bar, right? I have to start. Because this starts on the A7 before the, the next part uh, arrives, which is actually the best way to do it because it builds extra excitement. So I will play the first A, I'll start in the second bar, and the, in, the, in the second A, I will start one bar before that second A, and the, I will try to do the same for the, from the bridge to the third A. So here we go. So the second time I actually started in the wrong place, but it still works, right? You just have to uh, stop this pattern earlier. So you can start with the, this phrase on the beat. If you have trouble with these phrases and think to yourself, why does it seem not that difficult when I play it? But that's because, again, I started my guitar um, tuition with studying Stockholm like only Stockholo for many years and I practiced these phrases or phrases like this for hours and hours on end. So for me, this is actually pretty easy to play now just because it's just so part of my system. And I have much more trouble uh, if I um, transcribe Borelli because uh, it's not that that is, that is much harder technically, it's just that I'm not used to his little uh, mannerisms yet, right? M maybe in the future. So don't get discouraged, just keep working on it, and I'm sure at one point it will start making sense. Uh, especially if you consider that everything is based around diminished arpeggios. So if you are fluent with diminished arpeggios, all this stuff will become a lot easier. Also with uh, friction dominant skills down. And uh, if you want to know more about that, check out my video called Fundamental Shapes. And I talk about both um, things. I will link that in the description. 
Last thing is my Indiegogo is running and I was I thought that it wasn't going to work, but now a lot of people actually have pledged. So we're almost there. Uh, there's still like 10 days. So if you want a copy of my book, a hard copy, then uh, join the campaign. And an extra news is, is the first time I'm saying it, all the people that have pledged in the campaign will receive a physical copy, of course, in April, but then will also receive at the same time the ebook version so you don't have to buy that uh, separately and uh, for other for all other people that are not part of the campaign they have to choose by either the physical or the ebook or both but then they have to also pay for both but if you are part of the campaign you'll get the ebook for free enjoy these phrases and uh, i will see you all in the next video bye